Well, we have the 56th speaker of the house. Republicans saying we're tired of looking like clowns. We're tired of people making fun of us. We're tired of the infighting. My time. And they have elected Mike Johnson. Now, Mike Johnson does not have a national profile, but he's about to. He is termed one of the key architects of the election denialism of 2020. This man is a starch, starch advocate of Donald Trump and the lies around the 2020 election, which is a real problem. Republicans had an opportunity yesterday to vote, vote in a moderate, but you know, Donald Trump pushed that person out and now we have an election denier as the Speaker of the House. Can you see the warning flashing signs as we approach the 2024 election? That we now have a Speaker of the House who is a full-blown election denier. Full-blown. What is good, YouTube family? It's your boy, Rashad, with the Black Anomaly Rising channel. Today, I'm going to be discussing the Speaker of the House. So, Speaker of the House finally been decided. I ain't going to cap. Like, I low-key wanted it to be Jim Jordan or Byron Donalds. So, for those who don't know Jim Jordan, he's all over the TV. So, I figure if you're watching this channel, you probably should know who Jim Jordan is. And then, Byron Donalds, probably lesser known. It's a black fella, conservative. He seems like he's like extremely intelligent. So I kind of was favoring him for Speaker of the House as well. You know, and the, if you go by the whole identity politics thing, black man, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes we also come to that a little bit. Okay, <laughs> it is what it is. But they went with Mike Johnson. Now, I really didn't have a clue who Mike Johnson was before this, uh, but I did look into him and he seems okay, right? But as you can tell by the clip that I played at the beginning, He's got some haters, right? And one of the biggest things that they like to keep bringing up, at least in that clip, is how he's an election denier. Like, a great evil has fallen upon the world. Somebody questioned the freaking election against Joe Biden that had absolutely nothing to do with mail-in ballots that you cannot verify or anything like that. So there, there was absolutely no way that there was any cheating going on whatsoever, right? That's clear. There couldn't have been any cheating with mail-in ballots that you can't verify, okay? So, <laughs> in this case, even though Joe Biden received more votes than any U.S. president ever in history, absolutely no cheating. He's going to win again, considering all things, uh, all things equal. You know, no COVID, no mail-in ballots, in-person voting. Of course, Joe Biden's going to smoke Trump again, right? That's why they got, uh, you know, all these different... Uh, charges against them and all these indictments and they're trying to take him off the poll uh I'll take him off the ballot that's why they're doing all of that because uh joe biden can beat him fair and square right well <laughs> i don't think so but anyway i'm not going to go into details about mike johnson because you know i feel like all that information is already out there and i'm getting to that story a little bit too late anyway but what i will talk about is the election denialism because this is a topic i've been meaning to cover for a while very passionate about this topic because I'm freaking so damn tired, so god dang tired of Democrats acting as though the election denial is the worst thing ever. Like, it's never been done before. There is literal compilation after compilation after compilation all over YouTube with people denying elections. Here's a clip. One very affirmative statement to make. We won. But I didn't lose. I got the votes. But we won't know exactly how many because of how they cheated. I did win my election. I just didn't get to have the job. We were robbed of an election. Just using the word rigged, using the word steal. Do you think it's dangerous going into 2020? I, I don't because we can actually back it up. And so in response to what I believe was a stolen election, and I'm not saying they stole it from me, they stole it from the voters of Georgia. Back to someone outside ask if I'm ever going to concede. The answer is no. The answer is no. This is not a speech of concession. Because concession means to acknowledge an action is right, true, or proper. And I will not concede because the erosion of our democracy is not right. People that say you they're going to steal your election. It was not a free and fair election. I think the election was stolen from the people of Georgia. I believe it was stolen from the voters. Thousands of Georgians had their voices stolen because they were not able to cast ballots. Mr. President, I object to the certificate from the state of Georgia on the grounds that the electoral votes were no not... Debate. There's no debate. And I object to a certificate uh, from the state of North Carolina based on violations of the voting there is rights no act debate. and there is no debate in the, the joint government. session. I object because people are horrified 
by the overwhelming evidence Section of Section 18, of Title III of the United States Code prohibits debate. Um, I object. I've objected to the counting of the electoral votes of the state of Ohio. I object to the certificate from the state of Alabama. The electors were not lawfully certified. I object to the 15 votes from the state of North Carolina because of the massive voter suppression and the closing of voting polling booths. There is no the debate. There is no debate. There is no debate. And the massive the voter suppression that occurs. The gentleman will suspend. I have an objection to the electoral votes. The objection is in writing, and I don't care that it is not, it is not signed by a member of the Senate. You can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. He knows he's an illegitimate president. He knows. He knows. Votes remain to be counted. There are voices that were waiting to be heard. And I will not concede. Respect, and I respect where you're coming from, and I respect the, the issues that you're raising. You're not answering the question. Do you think it I was... Am, I, no, do, I, I, what I'm not doing... You're not using the word legitimate. There are still legitimate concerns over the integrity of our elections and of ensuring the principle of one person, one vote. I agree with tens of millions of Americans who are wo very worried that when they cast the ballot on an electronic voting machine, that there is no paper trail to record that vote. But constantly shifting vote tallies in Ohio and malfunctioning electronic machines, which may not have paper receipts, have led to additional loss of confidence by the public. And it gets worse than that, as you can see. So Joe Biden's very own Kareem Jean-Pierre. I mean, is that even her real name? But anyway, she has went on to deny the election herself back in the day. Even the folks on The View who always want to bring this up have also denied the election. Take a look. So when you hear about a stolen election claim, you may figure that it's coming from you know who. But the current White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, was just asked about past tweets where she used the same terms. Take a look. You tweeted Trump stole an election. You tweeted Brian Kemp stole an election. If denying election results yeah. is extreme now, yeah. Why so let's that? let's be really clear that that comparison that you made is just ridiculous. I have oh, been yeah, I have ridiculous. been well. You're asking me you're asking me a question. Yeah. Let me answer it. And you said it was Wait, ridiculous. I was. I was talking specifically at that time of what was happening with voting rights and the what was in danger of voting rights. That's what I was speaking to at the time. What we are talking about right now is, let's not forget what happened on January 6, 2021, when we saw an insurrection, a mob that was incited by the person who uh, occupied this campus, this facility in, at that time. and. It was an attack on our democracy. Let's not forget, people died that day. And also, let's also remember that she was part of MoveOn.org. She was not an elected official. That's right. she, was, oh. she was doing her part as an American citizen saying how she felt about an election, whether you like it or not. Everybody talks about everybody has the right freedom of speech. So that's mm -hmm. the difference. Let's discuss, you know, kind of some of the folks that... Uh, you know, are in office now who have denied that, that, uh, my Biden, goodness, Biden. Forget it, that Biden is president. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, I, I get so frustrated because I think this is not apples and oranges. This is apples and basketballs. Yeah. You know, it's no, there's no comparison well, here. You know, I, I will say, I, I, I do, I don't like whataboutism. I never have, you know, well, you know, you did this, so I'm going to do this. Or remember when you did that. But I will say that there, when Trump became president, I think people were so very shocked, even considering the Electoral College and, and that sort of thing. The assumption was, at least mine, I'll speak for myself, that Russia must have been involved. Because we knew from the Mueller report that Russia had some involvement. Russia thought that, they, that it could benefit from a Trump presidency, which it did, by the way. Um, but I remember calling him an illegitimate president. And that was wrong. I should not Why? have said that. Yes. I think it is important that 
you know, very prominent Democrats did say in 2016, Nancy Pelosi called Donald Trump an illegitimate, illegitimate president. Right, but they're not talking, but not he wasn't talking about Nancy Pelosi, he uh, was no, talking about her. I no. think we all have a duty to say, if our systems worked, if there was not enough fraud found to overturn an election, or there was not a coherent case by DOJ on why Russia changed the results of the election, because they didn't, we have to accept the results. If yeah. we want this great That's experiment right. in democracy, well, to stay. I mean, they did. We I'm did sorry, accept everybody did accept yeah, it. Well, exactly. We didn't like well, it, but we accepted the, it. Aside Go from ahead, the baby. detail that Whoopi brings up about a regular citizen working for uh, MoveOn.org yeah. versus a, a president, I think it's always okay to question an election and it's okay to challenge an election. But eventually, you get results from those investigations, the system flexing and working, and yes. then you accept those. We had that with Al Gore in mm -hmm. 2000, mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, Clinton in 2016. Yes. We had that with Jean-Pierre, who goes on to say in this clip, I also ex accepted the results. Exactly. That That's is the part of the, the very different thing. Yes. It has now been, no, it has been 673 days since the election that is still being denied by the former president. And Ladies and gentlemen, Exhibit A, Exhibit B, I rest my case. I'm so tired of these people. Please shut the F up about election denialism, okay? Stacey Abrams, I don't think ever said that she, I don't think she ever conceded, ever. Back to someone outside asking if I'm ever gonna concede. The answer is no, the answer is no. The answer is no. I don't think she ever conceded, not once. She said that she would, she would agree that she lost the election if she lost again, because she went up against Brian Kemp, Stacey Abrams out of Georgia, my stomping ground. Stacey Abrams went up against Brian Kemp twice. The second time she said, when asked, that she would that she would accept the results. But she never accepted the results for the first election. That never happened. It never happened because some people were trying to say, well, Donald Trump's never accepted the results. Eventually, we accepted his results. First off, I don't even think that that's true, that, that the results were accepted, at least not by Hillary Clinton at the time, for like literally years. It was all Russia was at fault. It, but uh, Stacey Abrams, she had never accepted her results period until this day like years and years later you know she's talking about all this voter suppression i was i was able to vote at the time i voted for stacy abrams every black person i know voted for stacy abrams all kinds of people the people the oppressed people the people that's being held down by the evil white people we all went out and vote for stacy abrams i don't know who the hell she's talking about wasn't able to vote for her like who I mean, somebody who was in a wheelchair or something. I mean, they, they would have to have a lot of things wrong. They had all kinds of people. They was taking and busing people uh, out, uh, busing all kinds of people, disabled and elderly, out to the polls. They was doing everything that, that they could. So I don't know what the hell that Stacey was even talking about. She's being full of ish, honestly. I'm, I am so, I'm like ashamed that I actually bought into this nonsense at any point and you literally got countless mounds of evidence. That's one of the reasons I started this channel. Because I'm tired of the nonsense. I'm tired of the Democrat cap. It's like constant cap, cap, cap. There's so many damn caps. <laughs> Everybody's just BSing and lying. And oh, well, it was different when we did it. Girl, <laughs> like I ain't even trying to hear it. Look, I'm trying not to completely go off and cuss and act crazy in this video. I think that's about enough. I, I literally couldn't even stand to watch the clips. I started getting a headache watching the, the clips for this video because I'm so freaking tired of Democrats BSing. So tired of it, man. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy. I appreciate y'all watching. Subscribe if you're new. Appreciate you watching the uh, Black and Only Rising channel. I'm out of here.